first reading is from Psalm 68, verses 1 through 8. O oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing, I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. The word of God for you, the people of God. We're going to stay in the Old Testament for today. Isaiah 55, technically the book of, of second Isaiah, it's the second half of it. Listen to the words that Isaiah speaks to those in exile, to those uprooted and moved to a land far from their own for a generation. Isaiah 55, one through nine. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that me, he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of God for the people of God. I love me some Isaiah in the morning. I love the images of water in the scriptures. We'll be looking at this Wednesday night in a little more detail on the, the image of water throughout the Bible. But think about water. As I told the kids, we're made up mostly of water. The earth is made up mostly of water. We need it to survive. We can go 40 days without food, but can't go three or four days without water. You have to have it. If you exercise, they tell you to drink three of these a day. That's a lot of water to drink. Three of these in a day, depending on how much you... We won't go into it. We're told to drink plenty of water. Youth group, when we go on the mission trip in the summertime, we usually go to a destination that's about 100 degrees that week. I think we could go to the North Pole and it would still be 100 degrees for our youth group. We always seem to hit the hot weather wherever we go. But about two to three days into the trip, tummy aches start happening and stomach aches start happening. And we tend to blame the food, but in reality, it's you're not drinking enough water. That's the first thing as leaders, we say, start drinking water. Your stomach will feel better. Your stomach will feel better. Our bodies have a way of telling us when we don't have what we need. There are signs in the Grand National Park, Grand Canyon National Park, these signs are strategically placed along the trails that remind you to stop and drink water. It says, stop, drink water. You are thirsty whether you realize it or not. And they say that if you're thirsty, it's too late. You're dehydrated already. If you have that thirst, it's too late. You haven't been drinking enough. I love what Daniel 
De, de Beauvoir, it's a hard name to say, he's a writer, De Beauvoir. I love what he says. He says, have you ever gone to visit someone at home, and as soon as you sit down in the living room, your host offers you something to drink, right? And your answer may, be, may not be based on whether you're thirsty or not, but your answer may be based on how long you want to stay. And even if you decline, your host might say, well, can I get you anything? How about a cup of coffee? How about, how about a soda? And you say, no, 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 I'm fine, thank you. And they say, well, at least have a glass of water. No, no, I'm fine. Have you ever been in that position before when you're visiting? Have you ever been in that position? Daniel says in this passage that Isaiah leans across the coffee table and says, hey, stop. Whether or not you're thirsty, whether or not you're hungry, you need what God has to give. You need what God has to give. Isaiah is telling the people in exile, whether you're thirsty or not, whether you're hungry or not, you need what God has to give. This is a central passage in a series of passages that proclaim hope and salvation to people in exile. And I, and I want to sit there for a minute because I never want to gloss over this. These are people that have been uprooted from Jerusalem. Their temple has been destroyed. Their city has been sacked. There are whole new leaders, and they've been moved to a whole other country, Babylon, with a whole other system of culture and government. And they've been moved and uprooted there, and they've been left there for 70 years with promise, but they've been left there. And God told them not to convert, but to assimilate, to prosper, to start your businesses, grow your families, and one day I will bring you back. But what about that 70 years in exile? What about, what, what do you think is going through the minds of people that have been moved like that? Maybe you've been in exile at certain times. What is salvation and hope for people who feel like they're trapped? For people in a faraway land, maybe not by choice. This is the whole basis of the Jeremiah passage, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans not to harm you, but to prosper and give you a future. Many people think that's an individual passage, but it's actually meant for a group of people that have been uprooted and moved to a land that they don't know. And the prophet says, come thirsty ones, come to the water. My ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts, says our God. I often preach and teach at our retirement facilities, Green Hills, North Press. And when I talk to folks after leading worship, the passages that connect the most, or the passages that I hear the most comments or feedback about, are the passages when we talk about exile. The Old Testament passages of Jeremiah and Isaiah. And I have a theory, I believe a lot of people feel like they're in exile. A lot of people feel like they've been dropped off, and nobody really comes to visit. Maybe you have that, sometimes. Even in the strangeness of a faraway land, in the face of, of the power of our foes, foes, God promises this restoration and this renewal beyond our previous condition. We might not be able to see the possibilities or understand the way, but God's word will accomplish its purpose, Isaiah is trying to tell us. And sometimes, friends, we're not, we don't know that we're thirsty. Sometimes we don't know that we're dehydrated. But we don't know exactly how hungry we are for the Word of God. And it's on us. It's on us. This is what Lent is. It's a time to look inward. It's a time to think about our relationship with God. And it's humbling to admit that at times our relationship is lacking because of us. We invoke logic and we, we, we try and, and rational, rationalize what God is doing and why God is doing it. When Isaiah, in a lot of ways, is trying to tell us that your logic and your rationale, it can't, it's incapable of grasping the truth that God gives us. It's incapable of trying to parse out the promise that God gives. Sometimes what God is asking us is to grasp a higher faith or a faith that we can't possibly understand at times or know why God is doing what God is doing. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Greg, will you move to that, path, that passage, please? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Sometimes we don't know that we're thirsty. Sometimes we don't know how hungry we truly are. 
But God says, you can't possibly understand everything that I'm doing. You can't possibly know my resolve. Can you go to the next passage, Greg? So shall my word that goes out of, from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed the thing for which I sent. I love this passage. It's not in our scripture for today. It's the passage right afterward. But listen to these words. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The water is going to be there. That's the promise. God invites us to the water. The water is going to be there. We get so nervous about running out of it. We get so nervous about not having enough. But the water will be there. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever, Isaiah 40. Isaiah is, is telling them that the water will be there, and even when we don't know we're thirsty, the water, the holy word, will be there. It shall not return empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed the thing for which I sent. So if we're reminded today that we don't always know we're thirsty, if we're reminded today that water is going to be there, the holy word for today is the invitation. Ho, oh, come to the waters, you who are thirsty. Return to God to listen, to seek the Lord while the Lord may be found. And keep in mind the prophet is addressing 6th century community that saw themselves removed and they have trouble convincing each other that God is going to fulfill his prophecy. But today, but today, this is a passage for us, an invitation in Lent, a call to holiness, a call to repentance, a call to, to come to the waters, to live in our own relation with our own exile situations, whatever they may be, and to hear again and again and again that my words will be fulfilled. To hear again and again that we are called to be salt and light, striving no longer for things that yield only temporary gratification, but things that last. Because the water, the bread, the life are things that last. Think about your own life right now. Do you have things in your life that will last? Do you have practices that will last? Do you have habits that will last? What is your mindset on? Things of the world or things of the spirit? This, these are Lenten questions, my friends. God says, it shall not return to me empty. The water will always be there, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I I sent it. God is leaning across the coffee table and saying, hey, stop. Whether or not you're thirsty, whether or not you're hungry, we need what God has to give. We need what God has to give. Amen? Amen. Can I pray for us? As we come to the waters, as we seek that which God gives us, I thank you for your holy word today, O Lord, and the challenging words of Isaiah, but the comforting words, knowing that you will fulfill the promises that you make. And you brought them back from exile, and you helped them rebuild the city through Ezra and Nehemiah. And we know, Lord, you'll do the same for us. You will help us reconstruct our lives, O God. And you will keep inviting us to come to those waters. I pray, O oh Lord, this morning, in whatever situation we're in, whatever exile we might feel at this time, or maybe we don't, but maybe we know somebody who feels pretty alone right now. May we bring these words. May we bring these words knowing, knowing that the water is sufficient and enough word is enough. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who sit beside each other, who listen, and who work through your spirit to live out your word. In Jesus Christ. Amen.